Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to The Broad Perspective here on The Broad Perspective Network. I'm Vivian Kamori. And I'm Katie Curley Nelson. And Santos Bonacci is joining us now all the way from Melbourne, Australia. And I'll tell you what, I'm so excited about this interview. Know, me too. This guy is brilliant. You, Santos, I am so grateful that you're taking your time. I know it's early in the morning over there, and you're so kind to speak with us today. Your information is, well, it's over the top. It is there's so much there, but it's also kind of given me some hope, which I haven't had a whole lot of with all the things that are going on in the world and those of us who are paying attention to world signs. And, and there's so much information out there, but it's all very negative stuff. And what you do is you present us with what's really going on. The basic information I take away from a lot of it is it's a way to know ourselves. And I've been talking about that. Who are you? It's time to figure out who you are and to know yourself, and I think you do it in a much more scientific way than the way I address it. But I'm very grateful, very grateful for you and what you're presenting to us. Welcome to The Broad Perspective. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the very kind introduction. You're very kind. And uh, appreciate the positive feedback on the videos and uh, what I'm trying to achieve, because you're spot on. I'm trying to help people to uh, reclaim their dominion like the prodigal son when he returns back to his father. And uh, he is blessed with many more blessings when he returns. It's a great uh, parable. And it is so, a great parable, yeah. Yes, and that's what I'm trying to achieve, that, um, that, people, that people can see how to know themselves, the science of as above, so below, which is in all of our holy scriptures. It, it, there is no... There is no Bible, there is no book out there that is better than the, other, than, than the other books. They're all equal, and they all teach the holy science. And if I can get that across to people with my videos and, and with the, uh, the natural sine wave, the sine wave of nature, as, it, as the sun's ecliptic goes through the 12 signs of the zodiac, we have our physics, chemistry, everything springs from there. Our gospels, our legends, our stories, nursery rhymes, everything is in that little uh, sine wave, in that little, what I call the key to understanding the holy science. Well, it is a key. I, <clears throat> on so many levels, I think that you have taken astronomy and astrology to a whole different level of understanding, at least for me. Now, having said that, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a science, it's mathematics, it's science, it's that left brain logical stuff which I have a real hard time with, even though I get it, I understand the, the general message of what you're saying is still a lot of information and a lot of, of that hemisphere of my brain that doesn't function so well, so I have to work a little bit harder at understanding it than probably maybe the average person, I don't know. But it's deep stuff. It's though. deep, it is deep. But you define it as astrotheology, right? <laughs> Um, astrotheology is a big part of it. Astrology is another big part of it. Um, what I'm doing is is uh, busting what I call busting the big fictions, busting the fictions. You see, this world is has been run by uh, good old uh, Rome. Rome uh, runs the whole system. The capitalism comes from there, the calendar comes from there, the Julian slash Gregorian calendar, uh, the alphabet that we all use all around the world comes from Rome, it's the Latin script, the uh, justice systems of all the uh, yes. uh, um, court systems of every country in the world have been usurped by canon law by the, the law of the high seas, which comes from Rome. It's commercial law. It's business. Rome is a business. It's a corporation founded by Julius Caesar or his son, Augustus. And the uh, common era, what we call the Anno Domini, Annus Dominis or Anno Domini calendar, is not pinned to a human Christ Jesus saviour, as they tell you in our universities. It's pinned to uh, Caesar Augustus. And um, I've proven this in my videos. In fact, I've done a, uh, I did a presentation on Sunday, two, three, two days ago. Uh -huh. And uh, it'll be on YouTube. Please, listeners, look out for it. It's, it'll be my newest offering. Okay. And in there, I show how all of this system 
is run by Rome and the calendar is pinned to Caesar Augustus and I give the proofs if you see coins of uh, if you've ever seen coins of Caesar Augustus you'll see the image of him usually with a crown of thorns yes and uh, he was adored as a god one only needs to read uh, Alexander Del Mar's book about Caesar, the worship of Caesar Augustus. And there's other fine works, Joseph Atwill. The Piso family have now come out from Rome, the Piso family from Pisa, Italy, who have had emperors on right since, since the Flavians uh, in, the, in 70 CE. Since the Flavians, the Pisos have, have ruled Rome. This is the Rothschilds of Rome, people. Right. Uh, the Rothschilds are also a branch of these uh, <clears throat> elites, these Khazarians that came from the East to conquer the West, and they have. They've been in charge of the West for 2,000 years, making sure that the West does not rise spiritually as it's supposed to, on cue and in time with the age of procession. And they have been medicating us, poisoning us, indoctrinating us, killing us, murdering the truth, shutting down all the pagan temples. They created uh, a fictional religion based on a fictional person, Jesus Christ, who, when you read the Gospels, you realize immediately, if you've got a shred of intelligence, <laughs> that the Gospels are talking about the sun and the 12 signs of the zodiac being exactly. the apostles of Jesus, right. just as Jacob has his 12. And when you look at the names and the meanings of those 12 at the, uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, is the first horoscope in history. And there Jacob is blessing his sons before he dies, his 12 sons. Right. And the description he gives of those sons harmonize perfectly with the 12 signs of the zodiac, which in Job 38, 32, clearly they call it the Maseroth, the uh, Hebrews, mm -hmm. and they are hiding this fact. And how can you hide it? You would have to be an absolute moron not to see that the Bible is based purely on astronomy and astrology. You'd have to be a moron. I mean, you go to church to a pastor to listen to the pastor. Well, in Greek, that means from the stars. Uh, minister which is a derivative of moon and star. So the minister, the pastor, preaches his filthy counterfeited doctrine into your ears, but he still follows the old religion. And he's still a pastor. He's still an astor. Uh, uh, um, uh, he's, he's, he's just a phony because he doesn't know the origins of his, true, of his religion and its nature. Nature and the stars, the, the wheel above, as above, so below. And so you have a bishop. You go to a deacon. Yeah. What's a deacon? Well, it's 10 degrees of the, of the uh, 30, uh, 360 degree arc of, of the circle. It's a deacon. Um, it, this is all from astrology, my goodness. And, and uh, you have an elder. Well, what's the el, el, elder? Well, that's, <clears throat> wouldn't that be um, the uh, Elohim of the Bible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the angel, the angel, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, um, Samael, Israel. <laughs> See, for those the, of us, though, that are open to this, it makes perfect sense. But most people have bought into the construct. They've bought into what has been presented to them their entire existence and the history that we know, at least at this point. And so to think outside that box is really, really sometimes beyond what some people are willing to do. And it takes a really open mind and someone who is willing to do something different and to, to think, again, outside the box. I've, I've said many times to people, it's not about walking the middle of the road. It's not whether you're right or left or, or thinking, I've got to go down the middle. It's really about <coughs> thinking outside that construct that we have all been raised in. 
And that's what you've done. Yeah. You've taken yeah, us outside well, the construct. Yes, well, Vivian, you, you mentioned it at the outset that um, you, you're enjoying the information, but it goes, it's, it's deep. Yeah, it is. And, and you mentioned uh, how our schooling has, um, you see, our schooling is responsible for this because they've, they've taught us what to think, not how to think. Exactly. And, and if they could only harness that beautiful, godlike glow that children have <laughs> when they're six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and then 12 is when it's all over, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. then they change. But if yes. they can grab those children at that age and teach them intuitively, Mm -hmm. and teach them how, how the, the, the child is destined to learn, right. then, then we, would, we would understand these things. See, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. I was able to think for myself, even though I was a Jehovah's Witness for 20 years and I did the, the party line, I was a really good Jehovah's Witness. I mean, I yeah. pioneered for, so for four you, years. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did all that, you know, 90 hours a month going to people's doors and trying yeah. to save them to Jesus and, and telling them don't go to the Mormons, don't go to the Pentecostals, don't go to the Baptists, the Catholics, the Orthodox, the Presbyterian, uh -huh. the Methodists and the other 29,990 <laughs> registered Christian denominations. Just come to us. We have the truth. Oh yes, the truth. The you truth. See, oh, that, I know. The yeah, truth. Yeah, that truth is opinion. It's yes. um, belief. You know, when they tell you, the pastor tells you, uh, you have to believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't doubt. So if you keep people in the state of believing rather than in the condition of knowing, well, you're going to have buffoons that you can lead sheep like sheep to the slaughter and you're going to be able to make sheep out of those people you're going to be able to fleece them you're going to be able to pull the wool over their eyes and you're going to be able to tell them you continue being good little sheep of jesus and coming to this church okay mm -hmm. you just keep coming to this church and right. and be good little sheep because we are fleecing you <clears throat> and the illuminati elite families are the ones who are behind all of the christian corporate denominations all of them and they all have their own interpretation of the Bible, filed away, uh, almost like a patent, if you like. You know, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a patent on th on their bullshit, and uh, <laughs> and 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 the rest of the buffoons they have their patents, and none of them know that Jesus Christ is hiding right there within us, like the Apostle Paul said. Right, right. There is nothing without that is greater than what is within. And when we know this, then you know who you are and you stand in honour and competence when you go to court. You stand um, in, in, in your responsibility as a man standing up ready to return to God, to the cause, and leave this material world like the prodigal son who says, Oh my God, where have I found myself? I've been sleeping with prostitutes and drinking with fools. And uh, the, the food that my father gives the swine in his kingdom is better than what I'm eating out here. So that's us. You know, we've come down to this land of illusions where there's a priest on every corner. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> pedophile ones too, because they love abuse. They don't only ha take great pleasure in, in spiritually depriving you of your spirituality and teaching you lies and filth and abusing your emotions and your spirit and your soul by stealing your power away from you with the hypnotism they also delight in doing it physically sexually because they're perverted they're sick they de they delight in teaching foolish fictions like the devil is out there and he's <laughs> satan is uh, god's enemy and they don't understand any of the science the only Satan that is out there is the magnetic forces of the universe. And the only Jesus that is out there is the positive forces of the universe. And this is the duality universe that exists under the ether, sub-ether, where the cause is, where all the patterns are for the matter. 
Uh, you see, when you look at the, the, the word pattern, it comes from pater, which means father. And when you look at matter, that comes from mother. Oh. So the patterns come from the invisible and the matter comes from the material. And that is the dualistic world that we live in. It is a universe, it is a oneness, God is a oneness, but God, the demiurge, is a two-ness. It's, it's a duality. And it's electricity and magnetism. And that is the enemy. One resists the other, one helps the other. They cannot exist separately. And the whole universe is pure electricity. That's all it is. The stars, all those... Um, galaxies we see out there and the Birkeland uh, currents, the Birkeland currents are the beautiful currents that charge the whole electric universe. And uh, our professors in our universities are spewing out their filth too because they are manipulated and dominated and sodomized by the elites too. So they have to teach you that Newton was right. And Newton was not right, he was wrong. He was really? wrong because he was a man who studied the, the, um, the effects and not the causes. Walter Russell, the, the American genius who was a contemporary of uh, Einstein, clearly debunks Newton. He debunked him uh, in his book, which I have right now in my hands, called A New Concept of the Universe, Walter Russell. Yeah, I think and, I remember, uh, you mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, and I would suggest that anybody who wants to understand the solar system, who wants to understand the universe, the as above, so below, you, you would have to read this book. <laughs> you would simply have to read this book. Let me just read a passage, can I? Uh, you can. We're going to take it. Wait, wait until we come back from the commercial break, okay? Because we ha we're getting the signal. We need to take a commercial, and then we'll come back yes. to reading that passage. So hang in there. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the broad perspective and Santos Bonacci. Stay tuned. Would you like to have your very own radio show on the Broad Perspective Network? Well, now you can. Find out more at 661-480-6787. That's 661-480-6787 for your radio show on the Broad Perspective Network. <laughs> Welcome back to The Broad Perspective here on The Broad Perspective Network. We're visiting with Santos Panacci, and he was getting ready to read us a passage out of a book by Russell, what was the last name again? Walter Russell. Walter Russell. Yes. Okay, so take it away. Okay, so um, he obviously was familiar with um, consensus uh, atomic theory, because this is what he has to say. Okay. Now, of course, if, if, please research Walter Russell. Um, there's some, some YouTube um, beautiful short productions about the life of Walter Russell and the genius that he was. Uh -huh. When he was a child, he experienced the opening of his third eye. Oh, wow. And he relates this. He, he tells how he was blessed. He was blessed to have a very precocious uh, awakening. And he saw nature. He could see nature in its glory and its simplicity and how it works so simply. And this is what he had to say. I mean, the book is full of jewels like this. Okay. The scientist has not only divided matter into 92 different kinds of substances, he has divided these 92 substances into atomic systems made up of many more minute particles of somewhere around 20 primal substances. These he calls electrons, protons, neutrons, antineutrons, antiprotons, mesons, negative mu mesons, positive mu mesons, negative pi mesons, neutral pi mesons, tau mesons, positive V particles, negative V particles, neutral V particles, and so on, without an end as yet in sight of the many non-existent substances. 
Mm. Wow. I'm, I'm reading deliberately slowly because if you can comprehend the impact of this, uh, this passage, it will just blow your mind as to why the scientists continue to be more stupid <laughs> than, than, than and, and teach rubbish that is just so draconian. It is so um, antiquated. He goes on to say, they so convincingly act their parts in producing the mirages of substance in this universe that the greatest scientists of this world have not the slightest suspicion that the many different substances of matter are but different states of motion. Oh, wow. See, matter is motion. That's right, all right. it is. Right. Energy, motion. vibration. Yes, and I explain in my videos on astrotheology that mind is 12-fold. It's a dodecahedron. Universe is mind, one of the hermetic axioms. Universe is mind. Universe is mental. Mind over matter. Matter is sevenfold. It's an octave. There are seven musical notes. There are seven planets in the solar system that we see with our physical eyes. There are seven chakras in the human organism. Right. There are seven colors of the rainbow. There are seven Elohim who say, who say, let us make man in our image. Seven days of the week. There is, there is seven in creation, intrinsically, essentially, it is a part of the material nature, the mother, matter. Matter is sevenfold and spirit is twelvefold. And that is the great secret of nature. It's so simple. And it all is electricity and magnetism. The, um, the genius Edward Leed Scalman said that atomic theory is all wrong. And he said everything is magnets. Everything you see is magnets, little magnets. Wow. And um, another myth of the solar system is that the, um, that the planets orbit on the same plane as the sun. They orbit the sun. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a lie. They orbit, but they don't orbit around the sun. They orbit with the sun. Oh. Uh, yes, yes. This is also what Wal Ro the, this genius, Walter Russell, teaches. He says that the sun is at the apex of a vortex. And uh, also the Indian teacher who died uh, 20 years ago, I think, uh, Kishava, Dr. Kishava the Hutt, he was teaching this vortex solar system. And as the sun is corkscrew spiraling through the heavens with its companion star Sirius, its dual, its binary star, and you have... Um, Walter Crutenden there in California, uh, Vivian, you have uh, the Binary Research Institute in California. Okay. And Walter Crutenden, he's, uh, he wrote the book, um, The Lost Star of Myth and Time, in which he proves, he proves beyond a doubt, in my opinion, that um, we're in a binary with Sirius. And he gives many proofs, and I, and I use his book in my uh, presentations to, uh, to prove it. Um, and as it spirals and corkscrews through the heavens, this is how all the um, celestial bodies work, according to Walter Russell. Our planet, like all the planets in the solar system, um, increases its rotational speed and decreases its orbital speed. Okay, okay. And it does this, and it does this forever. It, it has been doing this since it began, since it was ejected from the sun's belt, from the sun's equator. This is according to Walter Russell, okay? Now, that's how the planets come from the sun, and then they continue spiraling in the wake of the sun's magnetic field, in the vortex. 
and they, in turn, Mercury is the first planet, then Venus, then the Earth, then Mars, then Jupiter, then Saturn, etc. And they all follow, and their orbits all increase in in um, in orbital time. Mar uh, Mercury is 88 days, Venus 225 days, Mars, uh, the Earth is 365 days, etc., etc. Right. We we all know this, and and so our our Earth was much smaller once, and there was one continent called Pangaea on the Earth. Yes. And as it increases its rotation, it increases its centripetal force. And as it decreases its orbit, orbital speed, it increases its centrifugal force. So it maintains a balance. And it grows in size. And therefore, it will not fly off on a tangent. It will stay true to its or orbit as it increases in speed, you see. And scientists know this. This is why they erroneously say that the uh, Chile earthquake and the Japan earthquake have uh, caused the Earth to spin a little bit faster and straighten the tilt of the Earth. This is uh, only uh, half of the truth. Okay, so what it's, is the truth? Well, the truth is that it's the, it's the speeding of the, um, the rotation and the straightening of the axis of the Earth, which is causing the effect, which is earthquakes, because the crust of the earth has to straighten as the earth grows. And this is causing the continental shift and, and, and all, of this, uh, all of these earthquakes. But um, another truth that um, they're hiding from us is the fact that the axis of the earth does not stay fixed at 23 and a half degrees. Mm -hmm. This is absolute nonsense. All planets, all planets rotate their their axis their spin axis uh, 360 degrees continuously okay. the earth's axis is straightening because that's what it does uh, in in 140,000 years it will it will the axis of the earth will be at zero degrees and we, we will have a one season year but hmm. But it, it appears that what's going to take place in the next year or so is probably going to straighten that tilt really, really quickly. And uh, the seasons have already changed. Right. They've absolutely changed. There's no doubt about it. Um, and the stars of heaven have shifted. There's been a shift. Um, people all around the world are noticing this, astronomers. I've been uh, fixing my eyes on the stars and the zodiac and uh, their positions, the sun, the position of the sun setting, for years, and uh, I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, I can testify to the fact that um, the stars, that something's moved. It's either the shift, the axis of the Earth, has straightened more than what they're telling us, uh, or something else is going on. But anyway. And this is That's, just a normal system, right? This is just how it works. This is absolutely how it works according to Walter Russell and many, 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 many other men who, uh, who are not consensus scientists. Um, one might uh, want to look at the um, website uh, Thunderbolts Project. Thunderbolts by, Project? Yeah, Thunderbolts. The, okay. They are the best scientists, the very, very best scientists for teaching the truth of the pl of plasma cosmology of the electric universe Wallace Thornhill in Australia is a scientist and he he heads the scientific part of this group and um, Don Talbot and uh, sorry David Talbot and Don Scott I think are the names of the mythologists who have uncovered a lot of truth in these so-called myths of the, uh, the Hindus and the Egyptians and the Greeks. And they've discovered that um, those myths were uh, science. And so they've, they've actually, they are merging all these ancient myths with, with Wallace Thornhill's beautiful explanation, which harmonizes with Walter Russell, 
about this electric universe in which we live. It's simple. It's so simple. It's just electricity and magnetism. And all of those atoms, like the suns, as above, so below, are spinning in vortexes. And, um, and Walter Russell eloquently explains this in his book, and it just, it's a must-read. Uh, what can I say? It's a must-read. Once you understand how the science has been um, stolen from us, the truth mm -hmm. in science, in law, and in religion, and you bust these three fictions, because they, the elites have counterfeited these three, mm -hmm to steal our dominion from us, to steal our sovereignty and our um, godship. And they've done a good job. They've done a good job at, at uh, convincing humanity and, and, and creating these constructs that the majority of the world buys into, the huge majority. And this is yeah, what, enslavement, it's basically? For, I think so. It's lawful slavery. They outlawed unlawful slavery in 1815, uh, but they didn't tell you that um, in the contract, when you register to your birth certificate and marriage certificate and all the other flipping certificates and registrations that we uh, apply for, beg for, um, uh -huh. we're just buying into their services. They're just, they're just a bunch of crooks that have got services. It's like the mafia. When the mafia comes and knocking, uh, you know, and uh, you what can rest you? assured... You, you can rest assured that they're going to offer you a service. Right. Everybody has a service. This is the land, the valley of deep shadow in which the prodigal son comes down, dips down to uh, you know, sleep with the prostitutes and drink with the boys and, and get intoxicated. <laughs> now, the intoxication is spiritual. It's spiritual intoxication. You see, we are drinking of the cup of the whore of Babylon. Yeah. We are drinking the intoxication. Rome comes along and says, we're going to sodomize you, whether you like it or not. We've got an inquisition, we've got uh, armies, we've got police forces, we've got everybody in, in our pay. And we're going to offer you our service of protection. And you will pay for it. Taxes, rates, charges, registrations, fees. You're going to cop it. And, and, and spiritually, they also debase us with lies and stolen the true identity of the Christ within and given us a historical one. Oh, he came 2,000 years ago. Oh, and he's coming back. But uh, in the meantime, <laughs> we're just going to sodomize you because he's not here. <laughs> he's, he's been and he's coming. He's always coming. Right. Yeah, and this is, the, this is the, these churchgoers need, must be saved from this delusion. Right. And I must be saved. That. Because it, it does not help them or serve them to persist in their denial of the true Christ. In fact, they will say, as Matthew chapter 7 says, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and expel demons in your name and perform, perform many miracles in your name? You ask the Pentecostals how many mir miracles they pull off. Ha! Huh. They are real tricksters, those ones. And yet I will say to you, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. And this is what the churchgoer is doing. He's hurting himself. He's dangerous to himself, to his neighbor and to his God. Do you think, well, you know what, we're getting ready for commercial break, but something for our listeners to ponder while we're taking this commercial is, my, my take on a lot of this is that many people in humanity are just afraid to know thyself, to be secure in who they are. They have to rely on some external savior, either be it Christ, be it Muhammad, be it the ascension, be it aliens in a spaceship they won't look for someone else to save them rather than coming to terms with who they are and their salvations inside yes okay we're going to take a commercial break we'll be back in just a minute with more of santos vanacci and the broad perspective stay tuned Join the awakening. 
The Broad Perspective Network is a portal designed to reveal a new perspective and reality to those who wish to know the truth about the world we live in and our role in it. BPN, see beyond the illusion. Welcome back to the Broad Perspective here on the Broad Perspective Network. I'm Vivian Kamori. And I'm Katie Curley Nelson. And we're visiting with Santos Bonacci. We're talking about lots of stuff, astrotheology. We're learning a lot. <coughs> as this information is, is some of the best out there. We're really grateful to you that you're willing to present it to us. But one question I have, and I, I'm kind of going to deviate a little bit from our conversation. How did you get to walk down this path? Because this wasn't where you were. What what brought you to here? Ah, uh, great, yeah, great question. Okay, I'd love to answer that. Just one quick little thing though, because okay. before the break, before the break, you were talking about how the churches give us yes. a savior outside of ourselves. Yes. To to this is called vicarious salvation, a vicar. Ah, yeah. See, Christ is vicar. is a vicar. So oh so gosh. he's he's gonna mm, he's gonna jump in. All of a sudden, uh, when you're standing before the throne of God, and He's going to sit there and He's going to go, "Oh, hey, hang on, God, um, this uh -huh. this bloke here, he came to church. This fellow came to church, and he believed in me. And uh, look, don't worry about the fact that he hasn't done anything at all to improve his uh, spirituality and uh, to uh, grow the Christ within. He did have an alcohol problem, and he did bash his wife, and he did." Uh, cheat and steal and lie, uh, but um, he believed in me. He's in. He's See, in. <laughs> the vicarious salvation. If you're going to believe in that, well, good luck to you. Um, but if you don't got the goods, when you get there, you don't climb any higher. When you, you, get, when you say get there, where, what are you talking about? Get. Well, that would be the afterlife. That would be now. For instance, people who think, people who think about heaven think that it's, it's located somewhere in the universe. Well, it's located in the pineal gland it's in, ah. and, in the crown, and in the crown chakra. Okay. As your kundalini serpent, your electric energy goes up that spine and you activate your seven powers, the seven chakras, you turn the seven vices into virtues, then all of a sudden that electric energy climbs higher up your spine, up the silver cord. The silver cord which is spoken of in Ecclesiastes. Right. right. And, and, and that energy drives up and it goes up into the kingdom of the heavens, which is the pineal gland. This is why it's so important to know the zodiac, because when you know the zodiac, and the position of Aries and Taurus and Gemini and Cancer and Leo and Virgo, all these constellations are in your body and Aries and Taurus are in the head of the human being and uh, in the constellation of Taurus you will find the Pleiades the seven sisters the glorious cluster of stars that uh, correspond to your pineal gland and Aries is the springtime in which Easter is celebrated every year and that is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And that is because when the sun enters Aries, the blossom begins, and that on earth is the seed of the sun. You see, the sun impregnates the earth at that time. It's, it's the symbol of the semen, the orgasm of the sun in March. Aries, the sign of the Lamb, the blossom. Because, because for six months the winter trees had no leaves. They were dead, frozen, waiting for the God to return. Right. And when the God returns, he, part, he, he crosses over the equinox on March the 21st, and that is the crossing of the Christ, the Son, Jesus, this is the Son, and he has crossed over, and that's why they celebrate the Passover Lamb. And they eat the Passover lamb because the sun has passed over the equinox and into okay. the sign. And that blossom is the spiritual electric force that begins the season. And then the fruit comes from the blossom. 
and then the blossom is harvested in the in the sign of Virgo, the Virgin, the season of harvest, and then in September the fruits are preserved because down, 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 the sun is falling through the sign of Scorpio and Sagittarius down to its death in the wintry grave of Saturn, who rules Capricorn on the 21st of December, the solstice. And, and that cycle, the sun goes down, it dies, and then it's reborn, poof, with the explosion of the blossom in spring. And the fruit season begins again. And this cycle goes on and on and on yearly. And we don't even pay any attention to it because we've been divorced from our religion of right. these cycles. And we've been told that Jesus was a man who had 12 literal disciples, mm -hmm. just like the Gospels say. Well, the Gospels don't say that. The Gospels are talking about astrology and astronomy. And I've proven that in my videos. So by now, understanding I'm, the... I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, now, I, I, I guess I better deal, deal with the, um, the question. It, it, did you want me to go in, to answer that question you asked me then? Or, okay. or That's fine. Did you want to ask your question? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Santos. Yeah, well, how did I get into this path? Well, um, I knew when I, as, as a teenager, when I turned to the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, I knew that I was, I was on a path to find the truth. I was reading the Bible and I was a good student of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gave me a lot, a lot of wisdom. There's wisdom there. But um, we, we astrotheologists, we need to reclaim the Bible <laughs> from the people who don't understand it at all and who are killing in the name of it, um, murdering in the name of the Bible, in fact. And we need to reclaim it because it's great Shakespearean poetry, it's tragedy, it's satire, it is astronomical uh, phenomena, a registry of astronomical phenomena in exquisite, veiled and allegoric form. It's an exquisite book, absolutely exquisite. And I knew there was something really big about this book. And when I read Revelation, I knew that the Jehovah's Witnesses books that uh, interpret the book of Revelation was absolutely hogwash they are absolutely to be pitied these people if they believe any of that hogwash of their interpretation for the book of revelation the book of revelation is simply about the initiation of saint john john was a man who wrote down how the kundalini goes up the spine right up and bursts the seven seals of revelation and then he enters into the visions of the kingdom of god that is in every one of us. We all have that in our domain. Now, I came to understand this because I insisted on turning every stone mm -hmm. if I'm going to find the truth. And that answers your question. That's how I came down this path. I saw the movie Zeitgeist about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I was an astronomer and I did my research, I had to concur with everything that was in there. Right. And then I saw this buffoon who uh, put a video up called um, Debunking Zeitgeist. Oh. And I watched his video and I thought, my God, this guy's a buffoon, a clown. <laughs> he will go down as the biggest git, the biggest fumbling, bumbling mess of a pathetic repeater fool that ever lived. He's just a repeater of erroneous bullshit. And then came, and then came a, a guy who debunked the debunker. Now that is a film that you must promote and you must get people to see. Which because he tears to shreds the buffoon who claims that he's the debunked zeitgeist. So all of this enraged me. When I saw this buffoon, I thought, look, I can make a video myself with a blackboard and four different colored textures and I can make a video on astrotheology that will absolutely look it'll make zeitgeist look like you know just oh to be honest it's very very plain and simple but it's well done yes 
well researched. I mean, they, yes. Jordan Maxwell was a lot of input in the, into that, and Acharya S. And so Peter Josephs really did a fine job. He's a beautiful young man. He's just so conscious, mm -hmm. trying to you know help people with the truth. Now my videos, as much as I love that product, Zeitgeist, my video videos run rings around it in terms of factual evidence right. that the Bible is astrotheology. Yeah, Jordan Maxwell has a new set of videos out. One's called Maseroth, and the other one is called, I forget. Uh, Lucifer. Lucifer. One's called Lucifer, yes. and one's called Ma Maseroth. Wow. Yes, yes, I've, I've seen them. I've, he, he, I, I'm on his newsletter, so I know that those have been released, but um, I haven't had time to watch them. Uh, and, uh, but I've, I've consumed everything of Jordan Maxwell's. And I respect what he's done, but I, I do, I must have some criticism um, of both Michael Sarian and, and Jordan Maxwell. I don't think that they dwell on solutions enough, and uh, I don't think they understand the holy science, and they reject astrology. I'm sure of that. Oh, no, Jordan just, doesn't at all. Oh, well, really? Okay. Oh, absolutely. Well, well, no, this uh, is a lot of the sorry. same things that you're he's, saying. He's yeah. echoing what you're saying. I, I go down to No, no, but I mean... Uh, but what I mean is that that astrology is the science of as above, so below. Yeah, no, when that, one understands all of the, the planets in their birth chart, then one understands who one is. That's right. the, the kind of astrology I'm teaching, which is the, which is the only science of as above so you know and that's what i was going to ask a little while ago is that so what you're saying is by understanding the macrocosm of it all you're understanding the microcosm within yourself right yes and when we understand yes. our own birth chart <coughs> which i do want to address and i don't think we're going to have time on this show so when because we're going to do another show with santos so so next week you'll get to hear the the continuation of this but understanding our own birth charts is really significant when we understand our place in that macrocosm. Correct? That's oh. right. That's right. Oh. That is knowing the truth. Direct knowledge, not opinion, not belief. And that's that's knowing thyself. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, now I want to say, because we're running out of time for this show, and, and for our listeners, rem, rem, reminding you that we will continue this on next week's show. So, if you want to learn more, you can go to www.universaltruthschool.com. That's your website, right, Santos? Uh, that's the website, yes. And uh, Mr. Astro Theology is my uh, YouTube site where I have seven astro theological videos and one dealing with law and reclaiming dominion and being a sovereign. And you can also get the key on there, correct? Well, the key is one of the seven. Yes, oh, okay. that's the first, the first one I did, uh, in which I explained the key, uh -huh. uh, the key of nature, which will, will um, unfold all of the sciences before your eyes. You will, you will have direct knowledge of all the sciences with that key. And then I built on that with a series called The Key to the Holy Science. And then the next series of two was called uh, the the um, as above so below, and the final series is called um, Know Thyself series. Right, and they're all good. I think I've seen most of them, and I've had to see some of them two, three times. Some even more than that because I'm a slow learner. Some <laughs> sometimes with this type of information, I have to. But you learn something every time. I it do. Seems like, oh, you know I do. I, mean? I do. I really have to. I have to study it hard. But we're grateful. For this information and we're about out of time so santos we want to say thank you for joining us this week stay tuned listeners next week we'll be back with more of santos bonacci and we'll get more information and we're going to take this to an even deeper level so thank you once again for your time this week stay tuned for more of the broad perspective next week thanks so much is not pinned to a human christ jesus savior as they tell you in our universities it's pinned to uh, Caesar Augustus. And um, I've proven this in my videos. In fact, I've done a, uh, I did a presentation on Sunday, two, three, two days ago. Uh -huh. And uh, it'll be on YouTube. Please, listeners, look out for it. It's, it'll be my newest offering.
Okay. And in there, I show how all of this system is run by Rome, and the calendar is pinned to Caesar Augustus. And I give the proofs. If you see coins of, uh, if you've ever seen coins of Caesar Augustus, you'll see the image of him, usually, with a crown of thorns. Yes. And uh, he was adored as a god. One only needs to read uh, Alexander Del Mar's book about Caesar, the worship of Caesar Augustus. And there's other fine works, Joseph Atwill. The Piso family have now come out from Rome, the Pizzo family from Pisa, Italy, who have had emperors on right since, since the Flavians uh, in, the, in 70 CE. Since the Flavians, the Pisos have, have ruled Rome. This is the Rothschilds of Rome, people. Right. So well. So I have to work a little bit harder at understanding it than probably maybe the average person. I don't know. It's but deep stuff. It's though. deep. It is deep. But you define it as astrotheology, right? <laughs> um, astrotheology is a big part of it. Astrology is another big part of it. Um, what I'm doing is is. Uh, Busting, what I call busting the big fictions, busting the fictions. You see, this world is, has been run by uh, good old uh, Rome. Rome uh, runs the whole system. The capitalism comes from there. The calendar comes from there. The Julian slash Gregorian calendar. Uh, the alphabet that we all use all around the world comes from Rome. It's the Latin script. The uh, justice systems of all the uh, yes. uh, um, court systems of every country in the world have been usurped by canon law, by the, the law of the high seas, which comes from Rome. It's commercial law. It's business. Rome is a business. It's a corporation founded by Julius Caesar or his son, Augustus. And the uh, common era what we call the Anno Domini, Annus Dominus, or Anno Domini calendar. Any more blessings when he returns. It's a great uh, parable. And it is so, a great parable, yeah. Yes, and that's what I'm trying to achieve, that, um, that, people, that people can see how to know themselves, the science of as above, so below, which is in all of our holy scriptures. It, it, there is no... There is no Bible, there is no book out there that is better than the other, than, than the other books. They're all equal, and they all teach the holy science. And if I can get that across to people with my videos and, and with the, uh, the natural sine wave, the sine wave of nature, as, it, as the sun's ecliptic goes through the 12 signs of the zodiac, we have our physics, chemistry, everything springs from there. Our gospels, our legends, our stories, nursery rhymes, everything is in that little uh, sine wave, in that little, what I call the key to understanding the holy science. Well, it is a key. I, <clears throat> on so many levels, I think that you have taken astronomy and astrology to a whole different level of understanding, at least for me. Now, having said that, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a science, it's mathematics, it's science, it's that left brain logical stuff which I have a real hard time with, even though I get it, I understand the, the general message of what you're saying is still a lot of information and a lot of, of that hemisphere of my brain that doesn't function. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to The Broad Perspective here on The Broad Perspective Network. I'm Vivian Kamori. And I'm Katie Curley Nelson. And Santos Bonacci is joining us now all the way from Melbourne, Australia. And I'll tell you what, I'm so excited about this interview. Know, me too. This guy is brilliant. You, Santos, I am so grateful that you're taking your time. I know it's early in the morning over there, and you're so kind to speak with us today. Your information is, well, it's over the top. It is there's so much there, but it's also kind of given me some hope, which I haven't had a whole lot of with all the things that are going on in the world and those of us who are paying attention to world signs. And, and there's so much information out there, but it's all very negative stuff. And what you do is you present us with what's really going on. The basic information I take away from a lot of it is it's a way to know ourselves. And I've been talking about that. Who are you? 
it's time to figure out who you are and to know yourself, and I think you do it in a much more scientific way than the way I address it. But I'm very grateful, very grateful for you and what you're presenting to us. Welcome to The Broad Perspective. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the very kind introduction. You're very kind. And uh, appreciate the positive feedback on the videos and uh, what I'm trying to achieve, because you're spot on. I'm trying to help people to uh, reclaim their dominion like the prodigal son when he returns back to his father and uh, he is blessed with many uh, the Rothschilds are also a branch of these uh, <clears throat> elites these Khazarians that came from the east to conquer the west and they have they've been in charge of the west for 2000 years making sure that the west does not rise spiritually as it's supposed to on cue and in time with the age of procession and they have been medicating us, poisoning us, indoctrinating us, killing us, murdering the truth, shutting down all the pagan temples. They created uh, a fictional religion based on a fictional person, Jesus Christ, who when you read the Gospels, you realize immediately if you've got a shred of intelligence <laughs> that the Gospels are talking about the sun and the 12 signs of the zodiac being exactly. the apostles of Jesus. Right. Just as Jacob has his 12, and when you look at the names and the meanings of those 12 at the, uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, is the first horoscope in history. And there Jacob is blessing his sons before he dies, his 12 sons. Right. And the description he gives of those sons harmonize perfectly with the 12 signs of the zodiac which in Job 38.32, clearly they call it the Maseroth, the uh, 